What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So this week I put a post on my channel saying, because uh, I'm bikeless at the moment, would anyone be interested in seeing some kind of sights and sounds, kind of walking around the city kind of videos, show you what life is like in Japan. So quite a lot of you say, yes, please. One person said, no, get on a bike, shut up and get up on a bike. And uh, yeah, I feel you, bro, but uh, I've got to wait for my fuel tank to get painted. So it's going to be at least another week, I reckon. So today on my wife's bicycle, it's an electric powered. There's the battery meter there on the left. So I've got 40% battery left. So I'm going to ride downtown, show you what some of the sights and sounds are like in this city, which is Nagoya. So Nagoya is the fourth uh, largest city in Japan. I think there's 3 million people live here. So it's not too huge and it's not too small. It's kind of like a happy medium. It's got a bit of a, I would say it's sort of got a reputation as being like a big country town. I don't feel that at all. To me, it's full on, full on city like London or New York or whatever. Obviously not as big, but it still feels like that. It feels crowded and it's, you know, I, I'm not really a big city fan. But uh, in general, it's kind of easy to live here, I guess. Um, there's not that many traffic jams and when you ride a bike, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, and there's lots of these crossings like where they go this direction and this direction, this direction. So if you're on a bicycle, it's pretty damn convenient actually. But anyway, we're not here to talk about bicycles. So where we are now, we're just approaching uh, the area that's called, well, not the area, there's a, a big tower here called TV Tower. Uh, they, because they're really bad at pronouncing English, it's called Terebi Tower. So that's just coming up now. Hopefully you can see that. I would ride the bicycle through it, but they've um, recently renovated it and changed the rules. So you're not allowed to ride there with a bicycle anymore. But uh, yeah, there it is. I'll try and lean back so you can see it. So yeah, that is uh, now, it's a very cool area. It didn't used to be. Um, it used to be just a pretty crappy little park underneath it. It was always nice, but nothing special. But now it's all fully renovated and it's full of like trendy shops, kind of like expensive shops. Like, I don't know what that is. Nadi Fudi and like the alley, da, the alley. So there's lots of like cafes and little restaurants and stuff in there. But expensive stuff, very expensive in fact. But um, yeah, one of the things about living in Japan is things change so much. Buildings just get knocked down every like 10 years pretty much and then renovated or turn into something completely different. So in the 10 years that I've lived here, this city has changed a lot. So um, I'm just going to cross over here and we'll go. I'll take you into the park because that this park like runs the whole length of this like main street, which is about, I'm guessing it's probably three kilometers or something. All right, I'm going to go, fuck it. It's a red, but it's okay. So yeah, this whole park has been, I think it was this year that it reopened. It, they were, it was kind of like under construction for quite a few, few years. So there is a sign saying, please get off your bicycle. And uh, yeah, there's like cafes everywhere, ice cream shop over there. But it's pretty cool now. So this one here, it's called, as you can see the sign here, it's called Hisaya Odori Park. So there's all these uh, restaurants and shops. Like we've got a carry more shop there for the uh, outdoor, outdoor needs. Michael Kors. So yeah, it's uh, become a, a trendy place. Whereas before it was just a, uh, normal park really but this main street that runs pretty much from one side of the city to the other and the park goes all the way all the way oh, it's hard for me to show you because the camera's pointing forward but it, it stretches along a long ass way pretty much goes all the way to the castle all right so this area we're coming up to now as you can see the the exit for the station here so that subway station is Hisaya Odori um, but basically we're about to head into Sakai which is a really real popular place for business and for 
entertainment, shall we say. So I'll take you through the dodgy area and then we'll go into the, the, the main shopping area. If these traffic lights ever change, that is. Okay, let's go the other way. Okay. Hate waiting at traffic lights. Let's follow the Uber Eats guy to see if he does any extreme riding. Come on, dude, do something cool. Make you famous on YouTube. Uh, maybe he's not on the job. <laughs> so, yeah, this is another one of the sort of not a popular street, but this leads to leads to Sakai. And um, yeah, mainly it's businesses on this part of the street. Lots of offices and stuff like that. Not so many shops, but there are, um, you know, like Isakaya's, the Japanese style bars where you can go and have a drink and eat some chicken on a stick and stuff like that. So right ahead of us there, it says uh, Yamachan. That's like a chain, a chain restaurant. There's tons of those throughout the country. I think the first one was actually in Nagoya, but in uh, Yamachan you can get um, like fried chicken and snack foods and lots of drinks. It's pretty cheap actually, so it's a good place to go. And the menu's in English, so if, uh, yeah, I'll watch. I'll watch. It's okay. Tangi Oka. All right. Hey. <laughs> so that guy said, sorry, sorry, because the truck didn't wait for me. It's all right, I wanted to film it, so it's all good. No, I didn't, did you see the guy in the truck? He, he was a, kind of a scary looking Japanese guy. Oh, okay, let's go this way. A lot of the um, construction business here is run by Yakuza. So a lot of the times you'll see the construction workers are kind of scary looking motherfuckers. So this street on the right here, might as well take you down. This is sort of where this, the posh area turns into the dodgy area. So there's a lot of restaurants and stuff here, which is nice, but there are also a lot of uh, ladies' places, shall we say. Lots of uh, hostess clubs and uh, brothels and stuff like that. And there's something in Japan as well that's, maybe you guys have heard of it, I don't know, called, um, I don't want to say it too loud, called Soapland. So around here, there's plenty of those places, which is like you pay money and uh, you go into the room and there's basically like a shower or a jacuzzi and the chick will like wash you, wash you down. So she'll strip off and, and wash you while you're obviously you're stripped off too. And uh, it's kind of like, oh, here we have a crazy person. So it's kind of like, um, kind of like prostitution. Uh, not, they're not strictly supposed to fuck you, but you can pay extra. Mm. So that guy was having a good old conversation with himself. The things you see when you ride around the Goya. So, karaoke, karaoke, joy joy. So that, that's another place as well that's super popular. There's tons of those all over Japan. Like where you can go and rent a, a room and do karaoke. And everyone says it wrong, like in the West. Everyone says karaoke karaoke but it's not it's actually karaoke so you have to say like karaoke karaoke so not key because it's totally wrong all right lights are in our favor today look at this for a post box but you've never seen a post box like that before pretty cool hey i'm getting distracted i want to go this way all right So, on the left coming up now is, uh, it won't be open today, I think it's like fully closed now because of all the lockdown shit, but this, this place here, the hub, there's also a chain pub, it's supposed to be a British pub and you see there it says fish and chips. So that is um, back in the day when I first came here, that is where I went like all the time and that's where you find um, you'll find Japanese ladies who are up for it, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's kind of like considered a place, it's a bit of a meat market really. Um, guys go there just to get laid and Japanese girls will go there knowing that there's lots of foreigners there 
And we like to call those girls Gaijin hunters. So they're trying to actively find um, a foreigner to sleep with. So that's, that's where you go. It's probably still the same. No, I don't really like going there anymore because now I'm like a veteran. <laughs> Those sort of places are kind of like a noob, a noob place. When you're new in Japan, that's where you want to go. But if you're on holiday, coming for a, a trip, for a vacation, then definitely that's a good place to go. It's also cheap as well. And the happy hour is amazing. I think it's uh, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. And you can get like a pint of gin and tonic for like $1.50 or something. It's ridiculously cheap. So we're still in Sakai now. Um, this way, uh, there's kind of like a lot of hotels around here as well. Um, so this one up here, Tokyo. Tokyo. Ray Hotel. So it's kind of unusual to find so many hotels downtown. Like a lot of them are, you know, sort of like near the, the main station or something like that. But this street's got quite a few. So I'll show you a, uh, a little police station and a little shrine as well. Follow me. Follow me. Oh, look at that smoking room. Ooh. Right, so here on the left is a little police station. So, no skateboarding on the road. So this is what you call, um, you can see it there, it says Korban. So Korban is like a, kind of like, it means, if you translate it, it means police box. It's kind of like a mini police station. And there's a nice little, little shrine or temple next door. Should we have a look inside? I guess we could do. Oh, and there's the, there's the patrol car. Look at that patrol car. What a silly little, silly little car. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, uh, and those bicycles as well, they're the police bicycles. So they've got those, that box on the back, which is like um, for keeping all their files and stuff in. For um, like, if you have a car accident or something here, there's so much paperwork. And so that's probably just full of forms that you need to fill in. So yeah, this is a, it's kind of a quiet place in the middle of this busy area. Nice little little shrine. Can't read what that says. Central parking. Oh, so I thought that was something religious, but it's actually central parking. So I guess a uh, one of the, the places, the coin parking, which you can see everywhere. See that sign over there, that yellow and blue sign. So that is a, a parking lot and it's expensive. Um, all the time, 20 minutes is 300 yen, so that's like three dollars, three dollars for 20 minutes of parking. And you can get caught out really easily on those places because they, the time, the uh, price changes depending on the time. So in the evening, they're really, some of them are really cheap. Like um, where I used to park my car because uh, I didn't have an actual parking space, so I used to use coin parking every day for my car. And it was like 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. It was 300 yen for the entire time. So that one's 300 yen for 20 minutes. But um, where I live, which is out a bit further out of town, you can get an entire 12 hours for 300 yen. But the bummer is, if you're like a minute late, so you go there at 8.01 in the morning, not 8 exactly, then the daytime rate kicks in. So then it could be like, you know, an extra 300 yen just for 20 minutes. So you gotta be careful with your watch. So I don't really have any aim for today. I'm literally just, fuck yeah. Just riding around aimlessly. Oh, I figured it'd be interesting for you guys to see what the, the city is like. Ah, oh, kebab shop. It's days like this, I really wish I had a 360 cam probably should get up at some point. So another izakaya on the right there. This street as well, lots of lots of night activity here. Karaoke place on the left. Uh, what's this place here? Fashion and Health Michelle. So that is another one of the keywords. So you look at that and you see fashion and health. But actually, <laughs> I gotta get off to show you this because this sign is just hilarious. Can you see that? Beautiful tits, titty fuck, dirty lady, tight pussy, foreplay, ejaculation, girl next door, 
ultimate experience, blowjob, lotion play, excellent sensitivity, carefully selected beauty, everything comes true. And see there that little QR code, that's um, for, to apply for a job there. So, this is what you get. Not bad, 30 minutes, 7,000 yen. So like $70 for half an hour, not too bad. <laughs> if anyone comes to Japan, I'll take you there. You're paying, but I'll just go with you. I'll translate while you're getting a beautiful, highly sensitive blowjob girl next door experience. So yeah, it's kind of funny how that, that stuff is just, you know, openly put on a, on a you know, a board outside a price list <laughs> for, for a 30 minute blowjob or whatever. So this place over here, I used to come here a lot, but I don't really come here so much anymore. But this building has got a load of cool little restaurants inside it. So that one is Cheko, Chego Chicken, that's new, that wasn't there before. But I guess, um, yeah, see there is where you got cheese, Cheko Chicken. So it's kind of like a, a foreign foods kind of restaurant. This is um, one of the cool things as well. You've got all these set menus. So you've got like a course. So you get everything in that picture for 3,500 yen. But you need two people. So you can't go in there by yourself and order that. But yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's what you would call shabu shabu. So that, that stuff is hot. And then the raw meat, you dip into it, just like swish it back and forwards until it's cooked. There's also an Indian restaurant in there as well, and lots of other, other places. So, let's carry on. Seeing that's made me hungry now. So we're coming back to uh, one of the main drags. Alcohol shop there with the people smoking outside cigarettes and alcohol shop the perfect combination you know what i think i'm lost now i've been riding around willy-nilly and i haven't uh, paid attention to where the hell i am and there was a sign on the street there saying walk your bike don't ride in this in this area but whatever i'm sure it's okay So this area as well is like, um, yeah, I'm just gonna go, whatever. I'm doing it for YouTube. If I get pulled over for running a red light, as I say, because because stood still at traffic lights doesn't make an interesting video, officer. Please let me go. I'm a YouTuber, bro. So we got HMV Record Store on this street. This street's actually got a lot of a lot of talent. There's quite a lot of hot chicks who work around here in all the department stores and stuff. And it is lunchtime now, so maybe we're gonna see some hotties. Maybe. Oh, nice. Cold air coming out of the stores. Right, I'll just be quiet for a minute. shop gangster that's the other thing man like when I first came to Japan I was so shocked at the amount of money that's on display like um, every day you'll see Ferraris and Lamborghinis and like really expensive cars like where I come from in England you don't see that uh, the lights red so I guess we'll go this way uh, yeah so today's little tour was uh, the area that I would say in in the hole is called Sakai which is pretty close to my house the breeze guy what you doing son maybe he wants a race so yeah today's little uh, bicycle tour was the area called Sakai and so in the next video I think I'll go a bit closer to 
um, the main station to Nagoya station and uh, show you what it's like around there. It's kind of interesting actually. Okay. If I'm brave enough, I will uh, take you to the headquarters of the Yakuza because uh, I know where the office is. <laughs> so in, in this um, this area, well, well, in the whole of Japan anyway, but this area is uh, where their, their headquarters are and their, their, their clan or their gang or whatever you want to call them is called the Yamaguchi Gumi. So Gumi sort of just means Mm, not team, not gang, it sort of means group I guess, so it's uh, the Yamaguchi group and so being centered in Nagoya they're um, they're not so obvious I wouldn't say, it's not like you see them every day when you, you're walking around but if you know where to look you will find them and um, one of the things as well this year uh, Oh, nice boobies. This year, um, there hasn't been any festivals. So it's called Matsuri. So there hasn't been many Matsuris because of Corona, all the Corona bullshit. But the um, Yakuza are actually are really, really involved with, with that stuff. So um, they're having a hard, a hard financial year this year because there's no festivals that they can sell, um, sell stuff to. I'm not quite sure how it works, but I think what, what happens is, because they've got so many, oh shit, because they've got so many links to um, uh, places, as in like they own a lot of parks and stuff like that, and they've got links to the government, I think they can make a shitload of money by selling permits and uh, permission to other people who want to, to run festivals. Uh, and like when you do go to a festival as well, it's real, really obvious that the people that work on the stalls are not your average, um, you're not, you're not your average Japanese middle-class people. They look different, they act different, they talk different. And obviously there are a lot of cases of tattoos on display. So it's kind of obvious that um, they are involved with the, the brotherhood. Anyhow, I've waffled on long enough now, so time to end the video. So next video we'll go for a ride around the Doya station when I've got a full battery and uh, yeah like I said if I'm brave enough I'll take you to the headquarters of the Yamaguchi Gumi. Alright guys see you in the next video. Goodbye.